all those cameras that Tara alluded to, surveillance and otherwise, not to mention at least the three that he had in his suite at the hotel, uh, could be pieced together to give authorities maybe a better idea leading up to the events, what he was doing, what he was thinking. Former New York State Homeland Security Director Michael Balboni. Michael, what do you think of that, what these cameras could tell us, but more to the point, what his cameras could tell us. He went to great lengths to record what he was doing, to also put a camera through the keyhole of the door in his room to make sure authorities wouldn't just burst in on him. It, 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 it would be well telegraphed, and he could prepare himself, in this case, to kill himself. But, but that he was clearly recording all of this. What do you make of just that? So first of all, to your point, Neil, that, the, that Las Vegas has a tremendous amount of cameras. You're absolutely correct. It, it probably has the most extensive, one of the most extensive camera networks in the nation because, of, because it's Las Vegas. But what we're going to see there is lots of different information. What's really important for people to recognize is that all of this information is very hard to put together into a coherent and sensible timeline very quickly. So there's going to be, that's what a lot of uh, officials are, are looking at right now. But in terms of his actual utilization of cameras in the room, that sends another discordant factoid for this entire issue. Most, if you look at the FBI information on active shooters, most of them take their lives and, and, and do not have the final, you know, go out with a, with a, a gunfight with the authorities. So for this guy to create a sniper's nest with the incredible amount of weaponry and then plan by using these cameras to perhaps meet an assault is outside of the normal profile associated with an active shooter. In addition to which, there are questions today being raised by members of the military experts who sit there and say, you know what, this guy had, in a sense, an automatic weapon that he created, and he was firing for a very long period of time. Physically, the act of doing that, I'm told by weapons experts, is very difficult. That when you have that amount of fire going, that the weapon bucking against you is actually, it takes a physical toll on you. And so, again, an, another fact that just doesn't make sense. He didn't have any prior military training. He wasn't a law enforcement officer. He never had that kind of uh, official experience with weapons. So, again, Neil, this is, you know, it's, it's a huge onion. Every layer you unfold, you see another layer of other questions. When you question, you know, what, what goes on when you fire these weapons repeatedly and the physical toll it can take, uh, are you hinting that maybe he didn't act alone or, or what? Hey, you know, uh, I, you, you and I have worked together for a number of years, and you know my, my philosophy. You let the evidence take you where it takes you. You try not to prejudge an investigation because then you'll bias it. So I'm of the big belief, let's continue to see how the information unfolds. What I am so fascinating about is every minute you think you've got some direction that explains to you where this is going, some other fact presents itself that says, well, wait a minute, that just, that just doesn't add up. The profile doesn't work in this scenario against the typical scenario that we have been studying for a long time, that the FBI, as I mentioned before, the FBI has done really good work on active shooter situations. All right, so knowing what you know now, knowing what surveillance cameras might retrieve, including those on the floor, the 32nd floor of the Mandalay Bay Hotel, which at least could immediately alert when he was going to and from his room, uh, to say nothing of what's in, in the casino itself, where the cameras are everywhere, to your point. What do you think they'll be able to reconstruct? Yeah. So that's, that's an excellent point. This is what the uh, investigators are going to be doing. They're going to be looking at a couple of different aspects, you know, means, methods, and motivation. So one of the things that they are going to consider doing is reconstruct the actual physical transportation of these cases up to the room. What would he have need to, needed to have done? Who might have seen that? What cameras would have seen it and to try to piece it against what video would be available? And we know that there's going to be video in the hotel room. Uh, but that goes to over a period of time, uh, how many days, was he physically carrying one case at a time? These are all the specific facts that you need to assemble to create not only a timeline, but also to try to envision what steps he had to take to actually physically pull this off. Because, again, everybody's sitting here saying that this is not something that, that obviously had any a snap or rage. This guy had planned and prepared this. But nothing in his background that has so far come to light indicates that he would be able to mastermind this type of an attack. Yeah, it's just so crazy, um, to put it mildly. 
Uh, Michael, thank you very, very much. Michael Balboni. Thank you, Neil.